I'm here to discuss with you now why I chose a tiny home above any other rig and in order to do that I need to go back a little bit. So in 2014 we were living in Denver. We absolutely love Colorado, it's where my husband and I met, uh, but my husband was offered a job at Amazon with a much higher salary and ultimately we made the hard decision to leave to create a better life for ourselves. When we got there though, we realized very quickly that while we were making more, the difference in the paycheck went straight to our mortgage, which was $3,000 per month. The cost of living in Seattle had skyrocketed the summer that we decided to move there. Uh, people were elbowing for houses, offering $200,000 above asking in cash, and that just wasn't in our budget. And so what we ended up with was a house that had a $3,000 a month mortgage. Um, in 2015, we had the twins, and that made life even more stressful. Um, and by 2017, we had just had enough. Uh, we decided to make a serious change. We started talking to builders and chose one fairly quickly. We did the math um, because we did contemplate building one our own like everyone else, but ultimately we decided that for us, hiring a builder was the best option because of that $3,000 per month mortgage. It would have taken us at least a year, if not more, with the twins to build our own tiny home. And so we had to weigh that cost benefit, cost risk benefit, and I think we would have paid out more if we would have tried to build the home ourselves and obviously it would have been more stressful. So ultimately we were able to sell the home quickly and um, not have that $3,000 a month mortgage and pay a builder for their labor instead. Um, in the span of just a few months, we downsized our entire lives. It was about four months. And we used the money that we made from selling our Seattle home to buy the truck to tow the tiny home, which needed to be very large. It was a Dodge Ram Dually with a 410 axle ratio, rated to tow 30,000 pounds. And then we also put a down payment on the tiny home and chose to finance the rest. In January of 2018, my dad passed away and the tiny home was complete. Uh, we moved in the same week that I attended the funeral and it felt really powerful and still does. My dad worked hard as a financial consultant his entire life so that he could enjoy his retirement and instead he died at the age of 65 and never got to enjoy what he had worked so hard for. And for me, that felt like confirmation that we were on the right path. So the tiny home was the right choice for us because of our children. And I know a lot of couples who it's the right choice for them because they ultimately want to grow into the home and live in it for a long time. We needed dedicated sleeping spaces. We wanted dedicated cooking spaces and a bathroom to potty train. They were still in cribs. And if you've had a baby, then you know that you do not mess with their sleep. Uh, we also knew that we didn't want to live in it forever and wanted to create something that could become something else. Eventually we knew we would want to settle down somewhere and the tiny home feels more like a home. Um, you know, if we would have gone with an RV, they aren't made the way tiny homes are. We have a beautiful fireplace, beautiful entertainment center, wood walls, real cabinetry. It feels like a home when it's parked. Um, and then we also knew that when we outgrew it as a family, we knew we could turn it into a rental of some kind. So it felt very multi-purpose. We traveled with the tiny home for one year before we decided to settle in Durango, where our tiny home is currently parked. Um, I would like to mention that towing a tiny home is quite the endeavor. Uh, it can be done, but if travel is on your agenda, a tiny home may not be right for you unless you build fairly small, with a low roof. Our tiny home is a 34 foot gooseneck and it's 13 feet tall. Um, and for reference, uh, it weighs 17,000 pounds dry. And we built with a steel frame in order to keep the weight low. Our friends who have a 28 foot bumper pool, uh, which is obviously shorter than ours, and they built with a wood frame, their home weighs 23,000 pounds dry, and that would have kept us from towing it completely. Um, once your things are in it and you have to take into account the weight of the truck and the people in the truck, you go over limit, and it would have been very scary going over passes and things. So super grateful that we went with the steel frame. 
But again, if you are really wanting to travel, you will want to design something smaller. And I am definitely not the person who will tell you that it's impossible to tow a tiny home. I am the person to tell you that it is possible. Um, but if you want to travel just throughout the course, I'll continue to recommend when we're going through design process and all of that, that we design smaller and that we make a lower roof in order to make that easier for you. Leveling a tiny home is a big job. It's heavier than an RV because of the good quality materials that are used. I did become quite good at towing the home and actually nicknamed myself a towaholic. Um, I loved to tow the tiny home. Uh, it's been an amazing choice for our family. A tiny home is a perfect solution for someone who has to move every six months to a year for their job and struggles finding a new home at each location. It's a great option in a city where maybe it's hard to find a home because you have a pet. Obviously it's yours, you can have your pets. Um, it's an amazing option for people, families who are wanting to save some money in cities with outrageous rent prices or purchase prices. In full transparency, our tiny home mortgage is $651 per month, our, and it's a 15-year loan, not a 30-year, so we're going to end up saving a lot over time. It's uh, $150 per month for insurance, and while I could have found insurance for a little bit less every month. I went with a company that I trust, that I know will pay out if something were to happen. And all that's left after that is finding parking. In our current parking spot, we pay 600 per month. Our utilities are about 50 a month, even in the winter for electric, water, everything. It's very low cost of living in a tiny home. And while 1450 might sound high to some, it's extremely low to others, especially with the rising cost of living that's happening across the country. Um, if we were to find something that we could all live in here in Durango uh, in the same location, we'd probably be paying close to $2,500 per month. So $1,450 is a steal for us here. And then we're also paying towards something that's ours rather than paying someone else's mortgage and that feels really good. Um, it's also an amazing option for people who want to minimize their lives in order to have less stress and maintenance around their home. Residing a tiny home is going to be much less expensive than a 1,000, 1,400 square foot home. Repainting a home, um, the maintenance in general is just a lot less. And so if you're a person who loves to get outside, to enjoy nature, to travel, to adventure, the minimal amount of um, just cleaning and maintenance that you need to do, it's pretty substantial and it will improve your quality of life quite a bit. So hopefully by the end of this course, you will have made a decision on which rig is right for you and you'll have full confidence in that decision moving forward.